Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I have the most delicious, crusty, garlicky, herby, Dutch oven loaf of bread. Seriously, everyone in your life will think you are an artisanal baker if you share this with them. All right, if you're new here, hi, I'm Claire, welcome. Do you love bread? I do. I think I've only done one other bread recipe on this channel. I'll link it down below, but if you like cooking, make sure to subscribe because we do a whole lot of that over here. Today I actually was assigned to bring a loaf of bread to a dinner and I thought I would share it with you because this delicious crusty Dutch oven loaf, oh my gosh, it makes such an impact when you bring it places. People think that you got it at some fancy farmer's market or something because it does make an impact. It just looks very beautiful. And basic Dutch oven loaves are actually easier than they look, but I've added a little bit of, I don't know, spice to this one to make it a little bit more exciting. All right, and here it is. Let's make the bread. All right, for this recipe, you're going to need some all-purpose flour, some salt, some dried thyme, this wonderful stuff called Better Than Bouillon. This is the garlic soup base. I love this stuff. You should definitely try cooking with it if you haven't before. I also have some black pepper. It's actually fresh peppercorns that I'm going to grind. And I also have a little pouch of active dry yeast. The first thing I'm going to do is heat up two cups of water. You want this warm enough to the touch, but not so hot that it would like burn your finger. You don't want to kill your yeast. We're basically just going to bloom it. We're going to make sure that it's alive. So we're going to dump the entire packet of yeast in there. We're going to stir it up and um, we're going to come back to it in a few minutes and make sure we see a little bit of like foamy activity there. I'll show you what you're looking for in a second. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to measure out my flour. We are using 600 grams of flour today. I like to measure out my flour by weight. It just works out better for me. Um, and we are using all-purpose flour instead of bread flour today. Uh, bread flour is expensive, and this recipe didn't really need it, so I'm using all-purpose. After we've measured out our 600 grams, we're going to add a teaspoon of salt. Normally, you'd add more salt than this, but our Better Than Bouillon is very salty, which is why I have adjusted the salt content in the dry part. So if you're using fresh garlic, you're going to want a little more salt than what I used. Now I'm gonna throw in my uh, dried thyme. I'm using a tablespoon and a half of thyme. I love the way thyme makes my kitchen smell. The next thing I'm putting in is my black pepper and to measure it a little easier, I'm actually grinding it in a separate little dish. And I'm putting in one teaspoon of this. You could add a little more than that if you really like a nice peppery flavor, uh, but I definitely wanted the garlic and the thyme to really shine in this situation, but you could add a couple little a little more grinds in there if you wanted to. Now I'm just going to combine all of my dry ingredients. Now that my yeast definitely has showed me it's alive by creating that little foam on the top, I'm going to mix my Better Than Bouillon soup base in with it. I'm using a whole tablespoon, and like I said, this is really salty. So if you are using garlic powder, if you're using like some freshly chopped garlic, you are going to want to add a significant amount of salt, probably, probably a tablespoon of salt, maybe a little less. Um, but I find that this just has the most amazing flavor and so many applications. Uh, so I'm just mixing that in with my water and my yeast just because I found that to work a little bit easier to combine in with the flour. And now I've created a well in my dry ingredients and I'm just going to pour all of that inside. And I'm just gonna start in the center and slowly stir it all in. The great part about this dough is that you don't need to knead it. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. This is a no knead dough. So basically just mix it up until it combines into a shaggy dough. You don't need to put it on your counter. You don't need to knead it just until it combines. And now I'm just going to cover it and I'm going to put it in a warm spot in my kitchen, which today is the oven. The oven's not on. 
Um, however, normally I use my oven to prove things with the oven light on, but my light bulb burned out. So I got this idea at the last second. I just put a kettle on with some hot boiling water and put a pan of boiling water in there and it made the inside of my oven the perfect temperature uh, to rise the dough. And you're gonna wanna do it about an hour and a half to two hours till it doubles in size. Now here's what it looks like after it took me about an hour and 45 minutes and now I'm going to fold it in on itself and I'm going to do it about eight times. I'm going to do these 90 degree turns until it kind of turns into like a little square and then I'm going to go around and put the points of that square in on itself. This is the most kneading like that you're going to do on this bread at all. And yeah, like I said, it's super easy. You don't need to, you don't need a kitchen aid. You don't need to knead it for 10 minutes or whatever. You just fold it, just fold it in on itself. And now we're just going to cover it again and we're going to give it its second rise in the same conditions for another, you know, hour and a half. And after that hour and a half is done, I'm actually going to preheat my oven to 450 degrees. And now I'm going to preheat my Dutch oven inside of the oven because you want that to be super hot when you put your bread in there. And I'm going to leave that in there for about an hour. And now it's time to sort of give our loaf a little bit of shaping. I'm going to put a little flour on my counter. I'm going to tip it out. And basically, I just want it to be a little bit round, adding some flour to it, creating just a little bit of tension by bringing the ends inside, flipping it over, rounding it up a bit. We're not kneading it here. We're just lightly shaping it into a ball. And now I'm going to oil the same bowl. I'm not cleaning it out or making sure it's perfect. I just don't want it to get super sticky in there. I want it to keep its shape and I am going to let this have one last rise in there while my Dutch oven is getting nice and hot in my regular oven. And once that Dutch oven is super hot, you are ready to throw your bread in there. And I just tip it upside down, Throw it right in the bottom there. Remember your Dutch oven is super hot. Um, I also like to pinch the top a little bit. Any sort of like disturbance on the top there will give you a great little crackle on the top of your loaf. So I just like, you know, pinch the seam there. You could also do it in reverse and use like a, a lom or like a, like a razor to cut something in the bread. This bread doesn't have a whole ton of tension. So making great designs and it doesn't work out that well. It's more of a rustic loaf. And now we're going to put it in our 450 degree oven. We're gonna put it in there for 45 minutes total, but the first 30 minutes is going to have the lid on. So after 30 minutes, we're gonna take the lid off. And this is when our bread is gonna get that nice golden crusty top, which is of course what we want. And seriously, you guys, nothing is more impressive than whipping this loaf out of the oven. The whole family always comes right to the kitchen because they can smell it when it's done cooking. And oh my gosh, so warm, so comforting, so delicious. All right, you guys, that is our easy crusty loaf. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're inspired to maybe bake a little bit of bread. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but if it's something you've never done before and it's really intimidating to you, a nice loaf like this is a really easy way to start. Um, so yeah, get to baking. Of course, come on back for more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.